Hello everyone, I'm Skybert. Welcome to Skybert Hacks. Today I will take you down memory lane to when I started out with Unix and Linux and uh, the window maker desktop environment or just a window manager, not a real environment such. Um, and uh, I think it will be worth your while and for everyone that has used it in the past, it's, you know, it's given it a bit of a nostalgia and for others uh, new to window maker, uh, I think it will be a fun experience for you to try it out. So let's go. So this was my first window manager. I started out using it in 2000. I think that was the first time I used it. And it celebrates next step. So next um, is this company. You might may have remember have seen this logo. And this was, of course, founded by Steve Jobs of Apple fame. Um, and they made great, great computers. And they also made an operating, a Unix based operating system called Next Step. And that had um, a desktop environment. And that's what Window Maker replicates. Um, it looks like it looked like this. And um, you pretty much get this with Window Maker, just that Window Maker takes it, you know, into well, it's still being maintained. And you have, have, I assume, even more features than you had back then. To install it, it's available in practically every Linux distribution. So you do apt install w maker, and then you get it. And it has lots of doc apps, and we will get that to that in a moment. Um, but uh, this is how you do it. You just do apt search for window maker, and then you will see there are a lot of hits. Uh, it's still, apparently there are still a lot of users of Windowmaker. Uh, the files all, all go in GNU step, because remember it's based on next step, so then you have GNU step, and um, and so you can have files and you can configure them and take them into version man uh, version control and so on. So that's how it looks. So this is what it looks like. This is Windowmaker, and it uh, starts out nice and clean. Um, you get a terminal that you can open like this. You can, uh, so, so to get into the mood, of the, I will show you some of the things that I used when I make a four. Uh, I remember I used X penguins because I thought that was cool. So I'll just get that going. Um, you have this clip up here in the left hand corner, which gives you access to different workspaces. So right now I don't have any, but I can Say, that's it. Can I create workspaces? Uh, I haven't used this for probably 20 years. So, there we go. New. All right, so now I have a new workspace. And when I jump between them, you get this nice fading effect of the first person name. So, I used to have one called Emacs and Web Browser and, and so on. Um, I just showed you uh, another quite nice feature in Window Maker is that when you double click on the title bar, you don't maximize it, you shade it. So it just becomes this bar. And I must say, I, well, these days I, I, I don't use the mouse that much. I use a tile and window manager, but I, this is what I started out with and I, I quite liked it. So if you have, so let's say that you have several things going on. You also have Firefox, um, which works, as you can see, well under under uh, Window Maker. Um, you can use it, for instance, to browse the Window Maker website. And rather than to minimize them, which of course you can also do, which is called miniaturize, get it down there and you can double click to bring it back on. But rather than doing that, you can just shade it like that and you can see see what's going on behind it. I find that quite nice. Um, yeah, the Window Maker website is really, really nice. It's like skinned like Window Maker itself. And you can have all these doc apps here on the side to navigate. So this is the menu. 
So here, you know, there's the guy reading news, I can click on that and then get news. And as you can see, it's, I mean, it's only three years since the last release, so it's fairly up to date, relatively speaking. Obviously, this has been uh, developed for so many years. Just for me, it's 23 years since I used it the first time, so they have ironed out uh, all bugs, I would assume. Um, but of course, there are a lot of things to stay on top of with desktop Unix, but uh, in my testing here, in preparation for this talk, uh, I was positively surprised of how well it behaved and it was actually a, still a usable desktop. Um, you have lots of doc apps, um, which is its own website. It looks exactly the same as the main website. So if you just click on that one, you don't notice that you jump to a new do new website, but it's actually a, a different one. And there are so many doc apps. Uh, so they have them categorized and you can say like astronomy, there are five astronomy ones. Um, uh, lots of power consumption and yeah, if you're a laptop, you probably want to use that one. WMS. Yeah, so let's try to start some. Um, I do remember there was one called WM Top. Um, I wonder if I can get it somewhere else. I can't remember how to do that. I can get it up here. If I say attract icons, I can get it up there. And you can see the top three um, processes on my machine. And you can click on it and you get different views. So uh, I installed another one as well. Uh, this is a weather application. And you can actually move it just by dragging and dropping it over there. So I guess I could do that with this one as well. Let's see. No, that didn't remove icon. No idea. All right, um, what else? Yeah, so you have different workspaces. So of course you can, like what you're used to with different workspaces, you can have web browser in one and all terminals in another and the editor and the third one and so on. Highly recommend it. Um, it has a fairly, let's move to a clean desktop. So here, it has um, a settings control. No, not that one. Um, preferences, it's called, right? It has a nice preferences dialog um, with hard coded dimension, mind you, um, where you can click and drag and con uh, to configure lots of things in the desktop environment. Uh, and I've, I think the maturity that I met you know, Windowmaker had when I started out in 2000 using it. Um, that was impressive. Uh, maybe this hasn't changed as much since then, but I don't know if there's a real need. You know, if you are into this kind of thing of retro uh, computing, this is this is what you get. And there's, there's still a lot of websites available with the themes, let's say, yeah, if you search for window maker themes, you should get a lot of hits. Um, this was actually the main website. Oh well. I did check this earlier. I think they're still up. Yeah, they're still available. A lot of themes. Um, and changing when you have installed a theme. I like the way you can just change it. You you just go here, window maker, uh, no workspace appearance. Then you can change just a few things, like the you know you can change the background just just like that. But you could also do um, themes. And if you click on the sub uh, sub menu here, it becomes its own window, and you can move it around. I like that one trying out. 20 different themes, you can just keep it up and you can click on them to quickly move between them. 
And this year is interesting. So for Debian, uh, they have an updated Windowmaker theme. This is not that old. This is, I don't know, five years old or something. This is a fairly recent theme for Debian um, that uses the same background image as Debian had for the more popular dest full desktop environments for that release. Um, this is what this is the theme I remember. The, it's now called Debian Legacy. Oh, and uh, I show you this one initially because this is what I initially used when I started out using Windowmaker. So yeah, I think that's what I want to show you. So the files we just briefly touched upon that. Um, get this GNU step directory and then you have different files and you can obviously edit them if you don't want to click around in that interface and you can download and install themes for instance in this directory here. So um, the name is GNU step, it's like next step so if you were into next uh, back in the day you know you can r recognize that that hint, that tribute um, yeah, can still be recommended. It's still quite usable and fast, light on the resources and so on. That's what I wanted to show you today. Um, thank you so much for watching and I will see you. Well, hang on, let's see if I had any summary. No, still live and kicking, yeah? Uh, I put in a couple of links there for you to delve further and you can read more about next and next step and uh, that those great machines and great operating system that is no more but GNU step is still with us and we can relive some of the memories and the design ideas of those old systems thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time